aggregating large entries in the database to perform a count, for example, is a lot of work. The database has to sort through large number of records, whether it's in an index or in the raw heap table itself. Doing this too often can impact the performance of both your database and your application. Let us discuss why count can be slow and an alternative if you really don't want the actual count, but yes, you want an estimate. Let's just jump into it. All right, guys, so there are many ways you can execute a count on your database. So I have here a grades table, our famous student grades table. So there is a G, which the, the grade itself. That's the ID of the students, right? And uh, I think it has like around 60 million rows that I created. So what I'm going to do here is do a select count G from grades, where ID between 1000 and 4000. Give me the grades of those people, but I just wanted to count. If you execute that, it's so fast right now. Don't pay attention to the speed because I have caching going on. I executed this query many times, but I want to pay attention to the number that come back, 2,900. And the reason this number is a little bit low from comparing to 1,000 and 4,000, which around, should be around 3,000, because count G will return entries that are not null. And just, just think about it. I have an index on the ID field. That means... The database have used that index to pull the rows in order to count them. So we're on the index, but we asked the database to do a count on G. That means we had to go to the table to check those, uh, the value of G, whether it's null or not. So let's do an explain. Let's just add an explain analyze before these puppies. Let's see what happened here. If I do that, Let's pay attention to what happened here. We're doing an index scan on Postgres, right? We have returned 3,001 rows because guess what? We're in the index, right? The actual index entries, I, I don't have any deleted rows by the way here. So 3,001 is about right, but the, the final count has been reduced because we went back to the table to get the value G because that's what we asked it. We ask, hey, count the value G. And when you, when you do count G here or count any field, the database will filter through the fields and only count the not null values. And I have few nulls there, okay? So now it uses an index scan. And that tells me that, hey, I scanned the index, but I had to go to the table. It's not an index only scan, right? Let's spice things up and see, do the same thing here. But I'm going to do a select star this time. And a lot of people have the misconception that count star actually goes to the table and fetch all the fields and count the fields. No, almost no database do, do, do this anymore, right? Count star essentially means just count whatever entries you have, right? This will include null values. If you're uh, scanning the index, Give me the values, right? And you can see that we got a higher number. So let's take a look at the plan that did uh, that, that Postgres used to do that stuff. What did you use, Postgres? Tell me. If you really look at the plan now, look at this. It's an index-only scan, and always index-only scan, always trumps, and always it's better than the actual index scan because I don't really need to go back to the table. Again, don't pay attention to these numbers because I have caches all over the place, right? I, I just want you to, uh, the most important thing is to understand the plan. Running these numbers don't mean anything right now because uh, first of all, I'm in a container. I, I have a large amount of memory. So every, the database will start caching these pages if I execute them over and over again. But just understand the plan is the most important thing. And you, as, as, as a result, the larger the number of rows come back, the more work the database is doing. So 118, no, second. index only scan. All right, Jose, what are you trying to do here? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an update now. I'm gonna do an update, grades, set G equal 20, where uh, ID is between 1,000 and 4,000. So those rows between 1,000 and 4,000, I'm gonna slam all of them and update them. Right? Change this. Let's see how the Postgres will all freak out now. What will happen? I'm going to execute this count star, and then let's see what will happen. All of a sudden, guys, look, this number jumped again. Not by much, but it is 
significant the more rows the more actual real data you have this will go back but, but look at that it still says index only scan but look at this heap fetches i want you to pay attention to this the moment you start seeing heap fetches that means index only scan yeah we did only scan the index but we had to go back to the table six thousand and two times <laughs> right for these amount of values right i'm not sure this uh, these are the blocks or the actual rows i'm uh, uh, i have to i have to go back and check but we had to go back this amount of time which is expensive right why because we have updated the values the visibility map told the index scanner that hey by the way yeah you're scanning the index and i have i'm gonna give you only values in the index which is usually fast again if you're not scanning the whole index but these rows that i'm scanning in the index might have been updated might have been deleted so so i have to go back to the heap where the actual visibility of the row exists to check if the row is actually deleted because when you delete something in Postgres, the index is not immediately marked as deleted. It just adds a it adds, adds a new record and just uh, and keeps the old records for uh, uh, for MVCC uh, uh, reasons. So multiple concurrency control, so other transaction can see those old tuples. All right. So how do we fall? How do you solve this problem? Very simple. You just vacuum the table vacuuming the table will update the visibility map saying that by the way those tab those old rows that you just updated nobody's reading them no nope, there are no running transactions that are reading them right in a production system there might be but not now so if i do now the same query again so if we if we do it again you can see that we got heap features zero all right and guys every time i increase that number 2004 you can see that this is it's gonna get slower and slower and slower just to just to show you that for example now it took half one and a half second to execute and then if i increase that number a little bit you can see oh you can feel it so count is not cheap right it was cheap for the 3000 rows that i'm gonna return but every time you do that the, the plan now change says okay uh we're still going to do an index, but I'm going to use threading. The database decided to do multiple threads, multiple workers, not necessarily threads, multiple workers to scan that index. So I can give you the results, right? Still, we're good. We didn't do any heap fetches, but it took six seconds to return this many rows, right? So every time you increase that number goes larger, the operation is going to go slower. It's just, it's a proportional. It's just so proportional. So, all right. So what if I, I'm saying I don't care about the actual row count, right? I don't really care about uh, giving the actual exact value, right? But here's what I want to do. I want you just to give me an estimate. If you do just an explain, right? And let's just format this so it's JSON-y, right? If you do that, the, without an analyze again, without an analyze, analyze actually execute the query, explain will not execute the query but it will estimate it it will estimate that hey i'm gonna use the index i am uh planning that i might get this much rows back 2868 right so compared to the select count so it's not an accurate number it's it's 200 <laughs> values up and a lot of people use this and i actually got this trick from a blog that i'm going to reference below let's remember that the table itself has some statistics to to update itself right so the postgres actually without actually looking at the table it knows roughly how many rows are on the table roughly how much rows will come back are this are these actual correct numbers absolutely not but if you're building instagram or you're building something that account that likes or something like that this is way better right so i can quickly estimate this stuff and as you update your table obviously a good idea to do an analyze on your grades table or, or your table that will update the statistics to the correct numbers and obviously this operation is going to take a long time 
All right, guys, that's it for me today. That was count and how count is, is essentially a lot of work for the database. And if you really don't need an actual count correct number, especially if it's in the millions, why would you show the, the user 60 million and 320 exact number, right? Almost no one does that, right? Unless you, you yeah, so, so an estimate always matter. If you're working with fewer rows, you can do an actual count. But if, if you expect the table to grow, avoid you using a select count. Do, do an estimate with a planner like that. If that works for you, hope uh, that that's way more than enough. All right, again, guys, I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.